Hey guys, it's Johnny FD and I am in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and I'm going to show you what daily life here is like for a digital nomad, long-term traveler. Let's go check out some co-working spaces, some cafes, some restaurants. I'll show you how to get around this big capital city of Ukraine. So the very first thing that you'll notice is way more cars than in Kharkiv if you've watched my video for, for that city. And even though I live right in the city center, I actually have to take an Uber to the coffee shop, even though that's in the city center, just because it's so much harder to get around here. It's such a bigger city. The metros don't go everywhere. We have to walk 20 minutes to the metro and then 20 minutes over. Uh, it's a 35 minute walk uphill to go to the, co the coffee shop, which is a bit too long. So I'm gonna hop in an Uber. At least there's Uber, but it's still, still much harder. Uh, it's a All right, so I just got out of the Uber, and now I gotta find the cafe. Every Wednesday, we meet at a different cafe as part of kind of the co-working uh, days planned by Valerie, a local Ukrainian girl who I actually met on the Nomad Cruise, so a digital nomad as well. I'm assuming it's this one across the street, but there are no signs at all. Kiev is becoming super hipster with things like this. Good and bad, good and bad, but welcome to what I presume is the zigzag. Dolby Dian. Oh, got Yana too. We're a lot of people. What is this? This is toast with avocado and egg. Uh huh. And something else with cheese. Oh, I hope Kim doesn't turn to the next Bali. <laughs> it looks nice though. Another uh, avocado, uh, avocado toast. I was just looking at the phone. Okay, we have to do it again. I was down, bro. I broke down. I finally got a burger. That's really good. Oh, man. That's a lot of meat. So, more people have showed up, including Johannes and Lydia, having a very healthy. Sure. What is this? This is eggplant with egg uh, and cheese and then, then you know, stuff. I thought it was a banana split. It does look like a banana split. Here, you try it. Here, you try it. Look how fancy this place looks. It's definitely not. I have no idea what's happening. Nobody ever questions. People just kind of. It's so common to have things happening here that people just kind of ignore it. Alright, so I just got out of a taxi from the other side of town here to where my gym is. Luckily my house is actually pretty close to here. So this is actually no normally where I hang out. I normally just go to a local coffee shop like Aroma Cava or one of these places like Happy Cake right there just to work. Just because even though these hipster coffee shops on the other side of town are, are really, really nice, sometimes I just want to work for a few hours and go to the gym. But let me show you around this neighborhood and what the gym is like. 
So one of the things I really like about kind of being in this slightly more local neighborhood, even though it's still by the metro station and by the gym, are things like having fresh fruits and, and vegetables at these little markets right over here. And these are super fresh berries. They're really cheap. They're like, these cherries are about $2 a pound. No, for kilos, for two pounds. These squash white peaches are super good, also about $2. And the blueberries are a bit more expensive, but the raspberries or strawberries are usually pretty cheap. They have these donut kebab shawarma guys everywhere, and they're pretty good, kind of quick snack. And it's just like a nice place to, to walk around. You have fresh pomegranate juice, what over here, with this guy who squeezes uh, these, these and it makes a ton of people kind of hanging out. Pretty busy street, but it's still mostly locals. Like, you won't really see any tourists around this neighborhood, even though it's technically still the center. All right, so I'm at my gym now. It's called Inner Fit. And it's like, what, 30 bucks a month or so? All right. Just uh, Alright, so we're at the gym. I'm going to give you a quick tour. And we're going to see what we do. Alright, so I just got done with a great workout, but I head home, maybe chill out for a bit, and then go out for some dinner. Okay, here you go. Sounds good. Okay, that's what I By the way, this is how you know we're in Ukraine. It's the only place I've been that still sells fur coats. And of course, tons of high heels as well. Alright, just to show you where we are, this is the mall where my gym is. This is Olympuska Station, it's a metro station. Basically, as long as you're near any metro station, there's always a bunch of shops and cafes and restaurants. This one goes all through the city. And here is the Olympic Stadium itself. Really beautiful, huge place. So a ton of people walking up and down the street. All sorts of, kind of just like locals, families, young, old, and there are some tourists on the street, but it's really mostly locals. Like I would say 99%. Just kind of going through their day, which I really like. And yes, I know I'm technically a tourist as well. I'm not from Ukraine, but here's the thing about why I love Ukraine so much and why I almost didn't want to make this video. I didn't want to make this blog post giving tips on how to come to Kiev. I almost like that it's a hard place to come. It's a hard buffer. If you don't speak the language, you don't know people, you're not super adventurous, you're not super well-traveled, this is not a place that you would go on your first trip. The language barrier is really hard. Even though more and more people speak English now, if you just stop any random person on the street, I will bet money, because I know there's a, a better, it's probably a 90% chance they don't speak any English at all, like zero. If you go to a shop or a restaurant, yeah, it's a bit higher, but in general, Outside of the touristy city center, I would say 
in total between one and five percent people actually speak usable English. I think when people come here for a few days and they're just in the city center, they're just talking to young people, they're just talking to the person that works at some hipster coffee shop. Yeah, they'll, they'll speak, like most of them will speak English, or most of them actually won't. They'll, but the person that will serve you, <laughs> the one person that comes up to you, that person will speak English. So some kind of seems like a lot of people do. But here's the thing is, I like going to places that not that many tourists go yet because when you're the only one, you can blend in kind of to the local economy, you can blend in the local culture really well. And it's not like, you know, it's not like when a place gets over touristy like Barcelona, where you don't even really see any locals at all. Or even some parts of Thailand like Phuket, Pattaya, or even some parts of Bangkok. I really don't like being in those places just because there's, there's no local culture anymore. So even though Kiev is a cool place, and if you really want, you know, come check it out. I have a guide to it, a link to it in the description and you watch this video, really I encourage you to find your own Kiev, find your own place in the world where, you know, you are interested in going, but most people haven't gone yet. There's not a ton of info on there. All right, so this is my street. I just got home about a 10 minute walk from the gym and you can see the difference in income levels. This is called a Mashuka, that white bus, which is 30 cents and it takes you to kind of like the suburbs and the villages and this is, and I think a AMG SL650 or something. It's a V12 turbo. This is probably a $150,000 car. Correction, it is an S65 AMG and it starts at a $230,000 US. And here in Ukraine, it's probably even more for, because of the taxes. And to really put that in perspective, the medium salary here is $300 a month. And that's for like a normal job. Here in Kiev, it's a bit higher. People are making about four to five hundred dollars a month. But do the math. <laughs> to afford a two hundred thousand dollar car, two hundred thirty thousand dollar car, a quarter million dollar car, they and their whole family can work for an entire year and never even earn that amount. It's insane. I just did the math and it would take someone 47 years making four hundred dollars a month to be able to afford that car on a local Ukrainian salary. And there's some guy, some asshole probably, I don't, you know, maybe he's a good guy, but he's probably some asshole driving this car around. It's insane. So what's really nice is I live right in the city center, but in this courtyard. And because we're in a courtyard, it's super quiet. And there's actually literally like little children's playground right here where old grandmas, babushkas, hang out. And if you look in the trees, there is cherries, just kind of freely for the picking. Got one. Apricots as well. I don't think any of these are actually ripe yet, but when they are, I think that one's actually ripe. But when they are, you can kind of just, you can just pick some fruit. It's really cool. Free fruit. I love picking fruit from the trees. It just tastes so much better. Even though it's not super sweet, it's a little bit sour. It's so fulfilling to be able to do that. So here we have my building. Some ladies hanging out. Go be done. Okay. okay. I actually have no idea what they just said, but judging from context, I'm assuming that they said stop slamming the fucking door every time you come in and out. The last time I walked in, I let it slam and I felt so bad. So that's a good reminder. Maybe someone that speaks Russian or Ukrainian better than I can, can uh, let me know in the comments. All right, so let me give you a tour of my Airbnb. I pay about $700 a month for this place, which isn't that cheap. And to be honest, it's kind of hard to find good combination in Kiev. So who <laughs> figures out here, the kitchen is over here and it's a pretty old kind of place. It's not 
very nice or anything. It's just, it's usable. I couldn't even get this fire, this gas to turn off. So I've been turning it manually on and off on this pipe here. Actually, I don't think it's already off. Hopefully it is, so we don't die. A, a tub and a basic bathroom and a separate toilet not through this door here. But here is the main room. Just a bed, this huge built-in, which I would never be able to flip all this stuff. Another little couch area. I think I actually moved this. I, don't, I think it was facing the wall before, but this is kind of nice to be able to look outside. This super old TV, of course, I never turned on before. This was a, actually a birthday gift. And let me show you this little balcony. Actually, it's not that little. It's actually like kind of a big balcony. But I don't ever come out here except for to hang clothes. And this is actually one of my favorite things about Europe and Asia is you hang clothes to dry, which I really like. It's really inefficient in the US that we use a dryer. And here is this courtyard and this balcony. And you can see how quiet it is, even though we are right in the city center. How cool is that? All right, so just took a shower. I was packing a bit in the house. And I'm about to meet a friend for some dinner at this really cool restaurant right next to my place. And you can see why I like it so much. This guy literally hangs out and plays a saxophone on the roof of this restaurant. It's a nice place to hang out outside, but we're gonna go inside because the weather is a bit cold today. Okay, for the uh, delivery guy. And it's actually uh, themed like an old grandma's kitchen. It's a really, really beautiful place. And here we are. Previous. Cheers, guys. And every Korean girl I've ever met. Both mine? Both. I got the Korean guy. Sally, but I also have uh, some grandmother's pie. It has onions and I don't know what else. Some other vegetables. And ironically, I have an IPA. Version, but I imagine it's very nice. It's good actually. And of course, you got a salad too. How does it taste? Good. Not fucking delicious? Not fucking delicious. Sliwa. That's me, Danya. All right, so I just got done with dinner and uh, walked through to the metro. And this is kind of what's nice about uh, Kiev in the summer is it's still like relatively light out. And it's like 8.30, it's almost 9 o'clock. So it's not dark yet. It's, even though the weather actually hasn't been that good today, it's not that bad. I'm wearing like the lightest jacket and a t-shirt and I'm okay. And you'll see uh, this street is kind of like a really cool place, but this is kind of like daily life here in Ukraine, in general, you can go to really nice restaurants and they're not expensive, so you can go out and enjoy life. So you have all these really nice restaurants and even though it's kind of cold out, people love sitting outside. You can always get a blanket. It's always kind of indoor, outdoor, and just really, really beautiful settings. So also just across the street, two more really great restaurants, including a really good Georgian restaurant. There's a ton going on just down the street. Yeah. Uh, 
remember about uh, Nathan Lomachenko, it's Ukrainian uh, poet, and uh, he was like vegan, vegetarian, and uh, he eat only um, vegetables and like a lot of uh, cabbage, and he decided to make it in desert. Mm -hmm. think that it's really interesting collaboration um, to prepare it in this way. So I think maybe I put it more popular phrase after eating. It was interesting. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, okay. So this is a cabbage dessert. A cabbage, cabbage dessert, dude, cabbage dessert. inspired by a vegan poet here yep. in Ukraine. Exactly. So I'm just out here in the park, just actually in the city center, just walking around, looking at the sunset, and there's live music happening, there's people walking their dogs, there's people sitting around the park, just hanging out with their friends, you know, with their dogs, just reading a book, and it's like a really nice place to be, just right in the city center. All these local cafes around. This one's literally called Locals Cafe. People hanging out, walking their dogs. And here's the church they see from everywhere, but we're actually on top of the hill now. Perfect view to see it right now. The clouds look amazing. But basically, you have to walk up this huge cobblestone hill to get here. Through a really, really beautiful, kind of old part of Kiev that he's done Po Dill. It's quite thorough. One of their old walking streets, one of my favorite places actually. Сосредоточено, с задором и азартом Там попытается картину осудить Предугадать все финиши и старты И рассказать, какой ей нужно быть А рядом в галерее миллионы Прекраснейших, красивейших картин Ну вот, пожалуйста, подлости законы Красиво мы видеть не хотим Предполагаю, дело в том, что мы 